Welcome to a new video on my home automation and Node-RED series. About one and a half years ago, I think I did a video about, well, I know I did a video about the, how to use Telegram in Node-RED, or how, I should say, how I use the Telegram messenger in Node-RED, and how I um, integrate some of my services into Telegram, um, how I'm sending messages from various um, things and events that are happening in, in my system. And in that, the one thing that I, I also wanted to do, but um, uh, that was after I did the video, is how I manage multiple users. Because, I mean, even in a, a small setup like mine, at least I have two users, me and my missus. And I want to make sure that I can somehow control what type of messages I receive and what type of messages she receives. Because obviously, well, she doesn't need to receive some of the diagnostic messages that I might be interested in. And for that, I've created this sort of like service and subscription model uh, that I'm going to talk about now. The design philosophy behind this is uh, whatever happens in Node-RED is going to be clubbed into some sort of services. So if I look at the, the service list, I mean, I don't have loads at the moment, but um, like Node-RED starts. So I want to receive a notification when a Node-RED starts. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes I notice that the the node restarts due to some problems or I restart it and I just want to make sure that you know it did restart or somebody uh, arrives at our door and presses the doorbell or the washing machine finishes washing or I there is a new torrent that is available uh, something some series that I watch so each of these events will define are defined in these services and then you have the users that I've already covered in the previous uh, video. So in order to manage who is authorized to access the services on this Telegram bot and who is not, I created this whole user maintenance. So every user registers and I can set what is the access level for the user, what they can access. And um, once I have these services and the users, then I added the second layer of this control, which is this whole idea about the subscription. So you have a user well you have your own user id in telegram and then that that user can subscribe to any of these services so for example i'm interested in when the node red restarts both of us are interested in if somebody presses the north uh, sorry the doorbell both of us are interested in if uh, the washing machine finishes washing so that sort of stuff so i can once i have the users and the services i can select the user for example i select myself and i have all of the services that I can subscribe to and the services have two different modes so they can be either a triggered service so an event happens which triggers it or it's uh, it's scheduled um, at the moment I don't have too many scheduled services but what I'm trying to do here is some sort of reports like uh, I want to get an update on uh, like what's the status of my um, of my node red every morning so that would be a scheduled service and I can uh, in the subscription I can define that I want that schedule to happen 6 10 every morning so I get my report at 6 10 maybe somebody wants to get it at 7 or 10 or 9 or I want to you know subscribe to the same service twice so I, I get the same information twice a day so that's all the thing that I've implemented here and that's what I'm going to talk about now and of course, once you subscribe, you can also unsubscribe and you can see all the different subscriptions here. And that's it. Let's look at the beginning. The, the first of all, you have the, the ser server maintenance. It's pretty much like the user maintenance. So you can you have a, a button to create a new service. And once the new service is created, you select it. You can change the ID and you, you can give it a nice name. The mode can be either triggered or scheduled. I just mentioned what the difference between the two. And you can have a active, uh, sorry, uh, whether the status is active or not. And um, I mean, you can deactivate a service. So even if it's subscribed by users, it would just not run because the service is suspended. And this can also have an access level. And that's basically controls what you can subscribe to. So if I select myself, I see all the services. If I select the missus, she would uh, only see a few services. And by the way, this whole um, maintenance is only done in the dashboard. So I haven't uh, implemented the same maintenance in Telegram itself. So you can't change those from Telegram. 
but that's the that's the ba basic idea it's mostly just um, you know maintaining all these different settings and just like in the basic telegram flow i decided to store all these values in files so every time you change something it gets saved in an object and then the object gets written into a file a json file on your pi so you don't need to install a database or anything like that to use this flow and let me quickly go through the whole flow and if I zoom out so this is my in, uh, entire telegram flow and um, it has grown quite a lot I think this is my first flow where I managed to hit the the bottom of the screen um, well before that I didn't even know that one you know flow is limited inside and what you have seen in the previous video is pretty much like um, sort of like this one so this is the registration bit and this is the user management bit and that's the actual message processing bit and some of the miscellaneous parts and what I have added is all here and that's what I'm going to publish in a separate flow file so if you just go to the video description you can find a link to this flow so that's the the new bit which is related to subscription so this is uh, this part of the flow is the service maintenance and that part of the flow is the whole subscription unsubscription part of it and as you can see the link between the two is actually really simple because the there is only two wires which connect the existing flow so if I zoom in so from the generate list which is this one you need to create two, two wires which go to the user so obviously when the user changes if a new user gets registered then these two wires make sure that in the subscribe and subscription and unsubscription part the user dropdown also gets updated I don't really want to go into the details of the code because well first of all it, it is very similar to all the other maintenance windows that I have done in the past so you have the various buttons which either create something or they um, uh, you know store values in the context so I can pick them up when I uh, click on you know change and edit and everything is stored I believe it was a long time ago but I think it's global so if I go down here yeah so we have an object which is called subscription and another one which is called services yes and both of them are arrays so this is how a service looks like so the service ID the name the mode the access level and the status so pretty much what you see on the screen as well and the subscriptions is again very similar so you have the the chat ID the service so the chat ID that's the telegram ID you have a time if it's um, uh, if it's a subscribed sorry if it's a scheduled one and I've also included the text as well so I don't need to look it up when I display it on the screen and similarly when these uh, values get stored you can see the file in and the file out notes here so there is a services JSON and there is a subscription JSON or a couple of them dotted around so if you would import my flow the only thing you need to do is just to make sure that you change this uh, path to something which exists on your setup I mean if you are using standard Raspberry Pi uh, Raspbian setup then it will be slash home slash pi but if you want to put it in a different folder just make sure that you change this file for uh, file in and out nodes other than that yeah it's going to work it doesn't rely on anything else uh, so you can look at the code I mean there are really simple codes if if there is anything which is a little bit more complicated then I most probably have well probably not here but in most cases I have some comments but uh, there is nothing in these uh, function nodes that you would need to change yourself anyway so that's the maintenance part of the of the flow and if I scroll further down I see there are two other areas where uh, the whole you know checking the model is actually happening so the first one is this one as you can see I mean I'm not going to include this whole flow I'm just going to put some examples into the uh, the one that I export for you but you see here this is uh, something which is called a service dispatcher and when I want to send out a message I will create a payload which looks almost like the the payload for for telegram 
The only difference is that instead of putting the chat ID into the into the object, I use the service, and that's the you know that's the ID of the service that I've defined in the sort of the service maintenance. So I put what service I want to trigger, and and then the rest of the uh, message and the, you know the message of payload is you know what it needs to go through to Telegram. So like you know the tab the type is message, content is there is somebody at the front door. So this is the, the message that I send out when somebody presses the, uh, the doorbell at my front door and my doorbell service is service number three. If you want to send an image then obviously the, the payload is different, it's still message.payload service three, so again uh, you define the service and the rest of it is what you want to, you know, the Telegram message look like from uh, image message. So type photo, the content is the, is the JPEG, uh, whatever the path to the image that you want to send, and, and the caption. And what you need to do, you need to send this message into this service dispatcher function node. And again, it's, um, oh, it's not that complicated. This has comments. But what <laughs> basically this does is, uh, uh, the message comes in, it checks what the service is, and then it looks up the, uh, the subscriptions and say, you know, who is subscribed to, in this case, service number three. And then, uh, in my case, it would be me and my missus, so that would be like those two chat IDs. So what this function will do is, in that message.payload, it would remove the service attribute and replace it with a chat ID. And because there are two users uh, subscribed to this service, it would generate this message twice, once with my uh, chat ID and once with my Mrs. chat ID. And it will send out two messages. So the two messages will go out to Telegram. So it, it just goes into the Telegram sender node and both of us will get the messages. And you also get a status here which says, you know, the last message that was sent here, there were two messages sent out because there were two subscribers. It can also say zero messages sent out or I think it also says service disabled or suspended if it's suspended. So it does all the checking that, you know, the service is still active, who is subscribed. Uh, I think probably it also checks whether the user who is subscribed is still an active user or not, just to make sure that uh, if you inactivate somebody, uh, he wouldn't receive messages anymore. So implementing the note is again very simple. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that you put the service into the message which goes into this function node and the rest of the message is up to the, you know, whatever that needs to go to Telegram and the service dispatcher will replace the service tag with a chat ID tag and then send the rest of the message on to Telegram. It's actually very simple. And also here, the way I've written this function, know that it doesn't need any code changes. Uh, of course, as you can see here, uh, it takes the subscriptions, the services, and the list of Telegram users from the global variables, which my flow saves in the global. So if you happen to change that to flow or you change it to a different um, uh, context ID or you know this name or whatever, then you also need to update them here. So that's one. This is how I send out uh, triggered services or triggered messages. The next one is all about the scheduled ones. And uh, yeah, this implementation is rather uh, crude at the moment because I'm not really using scheduled uh, services, even though it is working because, uh, because I've tested that. This part of the flow starts with an inject node, which executes every minute and it goes into this service scheduler, which is very similar to the service dispatcher because what it does, it receives the basically the trigger that, oh, I need to check if somebody has subscribed to a trigger service. So here again, it loads up all the subscriptions, the services and Telegram users. The same rule applies that I've just mentioned here for the previous function node. And then it checks if, if somebody subscribed to any triggered service at this hour and minute of the day, which is you know the hour and the minute now. And if this happens, and if oh yeah, there is an active subscription, then it would generate a message out. In the status, you can see uh, some you know, sort of like debug data. So at the moment, it's uh, 3.31 and nothing to schedule because 
I actually don't have any scheduled services at this hour and minute. But if I would have, then on the output it would just send a message out. And this message, uh, again just like before, uh, the payload contains an object which has a service attribute and then it will send out the service that, uh, that just got scheduled. And I've included a switch which says, okay, if this is service 50 which got scheduled or service 10 or 11 that, that got scheduled, then you need, to some, yeah, you need your own logic to generate the content. So I've created this very simple node which basically says, uh, okay, I want to send a message to Telegram and so obviously the type is message and the content is dummy message sent by, you know, service 50 at you know, whatever uh, time. So here you have to replace that with, you know, whatever content that you want to generate and, and then you send it off to the Telegram sender. And of course the message that comes out here, besides it's containing the service, it also contains the chat ID of the user that is subscribed to that service. So just make sure that you don't override the payload you just add the type, the content, the file, or whatever uh, uh, attribute that Telegram expects. Because Telegram doesn't mind if there is some other attribute. If it has the chat ID, the type, and the content, at least it will be able to deliver the message. So again, this is all you need to do. You fill out the details here. The message that has arrived already contains the chat ID. So you just need to you know, maintain the rest. And that's it. Of course, if it's an image message, then you have to specify the type as photo, the content as, again, the, uh, the URL, and then the caption as the, you know, whatever text caption. And if you add these contents, everything is going to be ready for the Telegram note. So you just forward the message to the Telegram sender. And I have to say, I think that's pretty much it. It's uh, quite a nice and powerful flow and then I like the fact that I can just easily modify it and change some settings and uh, I've been using it ever since I've, um, I've created it. I mean obviously before that I would just have multiple function node with a hard-coded uh, uh, you know chat ID and replacing that with this uh, logic it just actually makes uh, my life much much easier and also the maintenance of these messages going back and forth it just makes it much easier. So as I mentioned already, go to the video description where you find the link to this flow. But I think that would be all for now. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.